presenting the second part of our box to Checo. Well, earlier this week, Monday night in Las Vegas, the WBC middleweight title changed hands with Iran Barkley pulling off the stunner, stopping Thomas Hearns in round three. Frank Tate is the reigning IBF middleweight champ. And coming up later on Sports World, it will be the WBA middleweight title holder, Sambu Kalanbe, defending against Robbie Sims. Now, Sims is on the comeback trail. Kalanbe has been on a roll. How do you size up the fight? Well, I think Kalanbe has trouble with the left-handers. Added to that, he's a counterpuncher, which means if Sims is aggressive at the beginning, he can build an early lead. And the major question... He's not in two in his home country. Logically, if I fight at home, I have my own public, and in turn, it's a great advantage for me. While celebrated at home by fans who have dubbed him Patrizio, Callum Bay suffers from a decided identity crisis outside of Italy, especially among the American boxing community. I'll certainly get famous if I fight and beat a Leonard or a Hagler. Worldwide recognition is something he feels entitled to. In fact, on the strength of victories over Iran Barkley and Mike McCallum, Callum Bay believes he has the credentials to join the legendary troika of Leonard, Hagler and Hearns in the realm of boxing greatness. <laughs> I feel I am on the same level with Leonard, Hagler, and Hearns because they are champions and I am now a champion myself. I'd like to have a fight with any of the three of them if they haven't retired. Back in March, he stopped Ralph Smiley in nine, and as you heard, he has been inactive only four fights in the previous two years, and the inactivity led to Sims being dropped from the ratings. First, it appeared that Sims would go up against Frank Tate for the IBF middleweight crowd as you look at Sambu Calabé uh, making his way, but the IBF ruled that Tate had a mandatory defense against Michael Dunn, so the matchup was made for Sims and Calabé. And here comes Sambu Calabé. He is an adopted Italian called Patrizio by his countrymen from Zaire. Now living in Ancona, Italy. Spent some time in Rome. And he enters the ring with 43 victories, three defeats, one draw, 23 by knockout. His last fight. Back in March, defending his title by taking a 12-round decision over Mike McCallum. So Callum Bay and Sims are getting ready. We'll be back right after these messages. And we welcome you back to Ravenna, Italy. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Sambu Callum Bay, and Robbie Sims are in the ring and let's check out the uh, fight doctor rx first from the point of view of the challenger robbie sims for sims he must take advantage of callum bay's inexperience with lefties to build an early lead if he can as far as callum bay he must try to adjust quickly to the left-handed style of sims using motion as the key to stay away from the aggressive sims in the early rounds the introduction of robbie sims Sambu Kalanbe won the WBA middleweight crown that was vacated when Marvin Hagler signed to go up against Ray Leonard and then Kalanbe beat Iran Barkley in a box off back in October of last year to win the title. Kalanbe has been on a roll. The victory over Mike McCallum, his previous two fights, he won by decision over Barkley. And he also won by decision over Harold Graham in London. Victory over Graham gave Callum Bay the European middleweight uh, championship. Callum Bay cutting Graham and made him take a standing eight. And there is Sambu Callum Bay has a very effective jab as demonstrated against Mike McCallum. Sharp counter puncher. Excellent defensive boxer. Slipping and sliding away from punches. Well, the introduction of Sambu Kalambe. The referee, John Coyle of Great Britain, he worked the Kalambe and McCallum fight last March. 
The scoring under the WBA 10-point must system handled by three judges, Nicasio Drake of Panama, Ovi Overson of Denmark, and Medardo Villalobos of Panama. Three knockdown rule is in effect. The boxer cannot be saved by the bell, except in the final round, there is a mandatory eight, no standing eight. And we are just about set for the action. As you can hear, they are attempting to uh, clear the ring. Would you say, Ferdy, that uh, usually the European boxing scene has the most cluttered rings you've seen? Yes, um, we're very fortunate today that uh, they have dispensed with the um, national anthems for a technical problem or we would be here well past midnight. Instead, we have the flags being held by beautiful girls humming silently under their breath the national anthems of each country. Plus the uh, flag of Great Britain in honor of the uh, referee, Harry Coyle. This is scheduled for 12 rounds for the WBA middleweight crowd. For those of you who were with us during the course of our ringside program, we saw a uh, controversial ending with Luca Di Lorenzi, the Italian favorite, winning by disqualification over Mark Adams of Canada because of the uh, number of warnings given by the referee in that particular bout and we mentioned at the time that the Italian Federation would not release the scorecards of the three judges well we have rested them away thanks to Jay Edson of the top ranked staff and as it turns out after uh, the eight rounds the bout was stopped in the ninth Di Lorenzi was in front on two of the cards 78 76 77 76 and Adams was in front on one of the cards 80 to 76 I had him in front by two points so again we point to the divergence of uh, thought in judging fights uh, in Europe however that is not the case here as we uh, pointed out previous we have uh, judges from outside of uh, Europe and the referee uh, John Coyle from Great Britain and we are set now for our 12 round bout Sambu Kalanbe defending his WBA middleweight title against Robbie Sims a brother of marvelous Marvin Hagler who is here at ringside will be talking with Marvin later on concerning his future plans and uh, Hagler introduced to the crowd a moment ago and received an ovation. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now it appears we are set for the instructions. We await the bell for round one. Sumbo Calabe going up against the Southpaw, Robbie Sims, who has gone Southpaw most of his career, but like his brother Marvin Hagler, he does switch it. Uh, to his disadvantage, Hagler's when he fought Leonard, he switched it for no apparent reason and lost a round. I don't see that happening here with Robbie Sims. This fight basically is of a puncher and a counter puncher. It's up to Sims to come take the title. He's got the harder punch. He didn't be the aggressor. But it's been Callum Bay's good fortune and uh, good boxing to box in counter punch style. And he's got a very respectable winning streak going. question here has got to be as this fight if this fight lasts into the later rounds how that 11 months uh, off has affected Robbie Sims uh, if indeed he was a bad boy then he will pay the price if he has been off ring rust is on him and he has not had a good tuna fight in order to stand into championship uh, competition with Calibay indeed the criticism of this fight was how in the world did he deserve a title fight and the answer is I don't know Activity tied into Sims' alleged drug problems. Several months of rehabilitation. Just past the halfway mark of this first round. 
And there is the counter attempt by Callum Bay. Callum Bay, in counter punching, punches much harder than Sims is doing coming in. Sims is rather tentative, trying to find his target, whereas Callum Bay is letting it fly. If he connects, this could be over early. Right now, he's about six inches short. He has not landed anything convincing on Robbie Sims, who also has not been shining brilliantly on offense, but he's been carrying the fight. In the dressing room, Sims spoke of not giving away this first round. A round that's usually a tentative feeling out round, and with a little bit of effort, you can steal it. Good straight left hand by Robbie Sims. Not that much power behind these punches right now by Sims. Again, I mentioned he's tentative. And coming up on 10 seconds remaining in this first round. So that is it for this opening round. And there is marvelous Marvin Hagler on hand to root his uh, on his brother Robbie Sims, and uh, marvelous uh, will be revealing to us uh, following the bout his future plans. Will he be continuing it all? Will he be calling it quits? What do you think? The results of this fight have yeah, something to do with it. I have the feeling that he already knows what he wants to do, although he claims that he did not make his decision too early in today. This is round two. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Southpaw, Robbie Sims. And Sambu Kalanbey. Very flaccid first round in which I gave to Sims just barely uh, because he led the action and outpunched Callum Bay and Callum Bay waited back, waiting for that big punch which never came. Nice two-handed attack by Sims. Robbie Sims' his first fight outside the United States. He comes in ranked number nine by the WBA, making it back into the rankings. through second round you heard the brief chant that for uh, Sambu Kalambe oh right hand that staggered Kalambe Kalambe back on his haunches and here comes Robbie Sims it's early in the fight he's got all his juices big punch for Robbie Sims but Kalambe is off the hook he's back Sims cannot afford to get careless now. Just under a minute remaining. Second round. Marvin Hagler screaming, take your time. Callum Bay still flustered and bothered by the left-hand style of Robbie Sims. He just didn't even see that punch coming. It landed flush and almost sent him on his haunches. with the uh, combination. I apologize for the audio problems we had earlier in the second round. And we understand we're uh, back in action. And the action is picked up here on the latter stage of round two. We'll be back here in Ravenna, Italy in a moment. Most effective punch of the bout, Robbie Sims able to land, and Colombe nearly went down. 
As so often happens when you're fighting a left-hander, you just don't expect that to be coming from that section. Of course, what Sims has done now is lost a little bit of the cautious approach, sensing that he can get this guy early. That puts him in position to receive those cannon shots of Calumbay, who is certainly punching um, with uh, all the force he's got. He's not lighting up. He's not uh, punching in a tentative fashion. And Perta Calumbay has had his ups and downs against southpaw fighters. He lost earlier in his career to Ayub Kalula, a southpaw, and Grant also goes from the left side. Robbie Sims has certainly come here to win because he's standing right in front of Callum Bay, daring him to punch for punch. And Callum Bay did land with the right hand. Callum Bay indicating that he took a shot in the back of the head. From and, Sims. and he did because he was moving when the, it wasn't an intentional shot in the back of the head. Marvelous Marvin Hagler with instructions for his brother Robbie Sims. But low key to this point. Bay beginning to score, finding the range. That was an excellent over and under shot by Bay. Landed flush on the jaw. Good. Another good right hand by Bay. But Calabé did not did not uh, land on Sims. Beautiful slipping and sliding by Sumbu Calabé, the WBA middleweight champion. His crowd now chanting just about every time Calabé throws anything hard that comes close to Sims. Sims also finding himself off balance as he follows through. continues to be a difficult man to, fi to fight. Calabay now with a pretty combination has that slashing style. Sims' eyes are beginning to puff up from the power of Calumbay's punches. It's a good round for Sambu Calumbay. And that is it for round three. Calumbay put it in gear. As you can see from this corner action, he wound up and threw what almost amounted to a bolo punch. There it was. He threw it again. He liked it. And he took that round decisively, the first round of this fight that Calumbay has taken decisively. In my book, he is behind 29 to 28. But certainly, the tides are shifting. And this is round four. Bay with some good looking combinations back in the uh, third round. Also, you get the feel of Robbie Sims in that uh, follow through, dangerously puts himself out of position, off balance on the ropes. I think he got spoiled by that one good shot that uh, uh, rocked Column Bay, and he, he decided to gamble it a little bit, and of course, he's paid the price. Then, of course, this uh, 11 months layoff, you can see he's out of balance. He's hitting ropes, he's sliding along. He doesn't have great balance as Robbie Sims. Callum Bay capitalizing at every opportunity with hard punches. Again, you can see the counter-punching style of Sambu Kalambay. Strong combination by Kalambay. These punches are landing on Robbie Sims and beginning to take effect. Both eyes are starting to look swollen. He's got um, swellings under both eyes. Just under a minute remaining in 
in this fourth round and is scheduled for 12. Callum Bay making Sims miss much more than he had in the first two rounds and returning fire with a great deal of intention to harm. And again, Sims lost his balance. Callum Bay effective with the jab, following with the right. That last punch, the right hand grazed Sims. It got him in a little bit of trouble. He fell back into that corner. He's come back fighting, but he doesn't have that steam in his punches. Sims' brother, Marvin Hagler, uh, screaming, speed, use some speed, as we come to the conclusion of round four. Trying to steal around but looking pretty. Right. That's all he's trying to do. Yeah, yeah. that don't count. Though. No, it don't. Okay. Don't, 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 don't pose out there. Let that punch go. You're moving good after you throw a punch. That's good. Right. Hurt that mother. Okay. All right? Okay. On to round five. We're at Bruno Benelli Stadium. Bruno Benelli, a one-time Italian boxing promoter. Ravenna, Italy. This is a, a soccer stadium, the home of the Ravenna Football Club. I asked earlier, Freddy, if uh, they're any good. I was told, Mr. Uh, Mason, the Class C, uh, which uh, we should point out, comes after A and B. Yes, I can barely wait for the Don King Stadium to open in Cleveland and the Bob Arum Stadium in Manhattan. I don't think we're going to get that lucky in the United States. In the meantime, in the corner, Sims was told... This guy's trying to steal the rounds by looking pretty on you. And Tim says, I'm punching hard, too. He was instructed to keep his balance, but um, he has not had good balance through the uh, four rounds, which I now have unofficially even 38 to 38 as Callum Bay has come on in the last two rounds. Scoring on the 10-point must system handled by... Three judges, two from Panama, one from Denmark. The referee is John Coyle of Great Britain. Three knockdown rule in effect. There's a mandatory eight, no standing in. He sends with his back toward you. And Sambu Kalabe defending his WBA middleway title. Combination by Sam who took the counter from Calvin Bay. That was six or seven good punches by Sims and then one zinging punch by Callum Bay that rocked Sims' head back. <laughs> Callum Bay looking to tee off. Those punches look like they hurt even when he misses it. He certainly looks fierce when he throws the punch with everything he's got. That's Callum Bay. They said this guy was a counter puncher and they were not joking. That's exactly what he is. A beautiful counter puncher. Callum Bay just waits for three or four tippy tap shots and then lands a meaningful right hand. I'd like to know how the judges score that. Bay continues to counter with Sims being the aggressor. The champ for Sambu Callum Bay as we come to the end of round five. Perfect example of Callum Bay slipping a punch and then returning with a very hard counter that shook Sims. And this is round six. Goody Petronelli telling Robbie Sims between rounds when you get Callum Bay in the corner against the ropes, just bury him. Rough him up, he said. You gotta get this guy away from looking pretty. You gotta make him get into a fight. And of course, that's a long suit of uh, Callum Bay. That's what he's done to all these previous opponents. He has just befuddled them uh, with good defensive fighting and then Picture perfect sharp counter punching. 
Robbie Sims in the white with the green stripes. Sumbu Calvin Bay defending his WBA middleweight crowd in the white with the red stripes. Sims, 28 years old, out of Brockton, Massachusetts, looking to make it back on the comeback trail. And Calvin Bay, on the other hand, has been on a roll. Calvin Bay, 32 years old. Don't wait for him, Robbie. Don't wait for him, Robbie. Now living in Antonio, Italy. Stop! Stop it! Stop! You're hearing the voice of marvelous Marvin Hagler. Snap! Snap! Come on, snap! 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 Sims is chasing, he must hear his brother's voice because he did much better while his brother was screaming. But still, nonetheless, Colin Bay comes back to neutralize two or three blows with very sharp counter punches. He gives ground grudgingly and then punches away. What the Petronellis have been instructing Sims to do is once you get him in close, rough him up. Don't let him get out. Of course, he has not been successful in doing that. When Robbie Sims was in top competition, uh, top condition, he had good hand speed when he was going well, also had excellent stamina. But at times, he's been hurt by lack of concentration and an exposed and vulnerable chin. And he's also lapsed into throwing weak arm punches, something the Petronellis have been trying to correct. And they can't correct this lack of balance he's got. He keeps falling into the ropes when he misses. There, he, there goes his legs again. You see his legs are just not in the shape that they were in when he was a younger man and when he was in constant training. So he falls into clinch. He can't control his legs. He falls into the rope when he misses a punch. That's a very big disadvantage to carry into a ring with a coiled spring like Callum Bay. And Callum Bay flicking the jab effectively to set up the right hand. Final seconds. Sixth round. We'll be back in a moment. Bertie, we were talking about the uh, the lack of balance on the part of Robbie Sims. There you see it right here. Look how his legs can't be controlled, and he falls into the ropes. That's happened to him every round, but succeedingly, in each succeeding round, he gets worse and worse. And that, of course, is attributable to the pounding he's taken from Callum Bay, who just sort of wears you out. And this is round seven. It is scheduled for 12. Sims has gone 12 rounds once. Callum Bay has done it on five occasions. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco from Ravenna, Italy. And Sims trying valiantly to mount, to mount an attack, but he just doesn't know how to keep Callum Bay pinned in that corner. Even though he lands five or six punches, Callum Bay is away and leaves a calling card of a hard punch as he leaves. In each of these rounds, Marv, Sims is trying to make it a fight. He's trying to come ahead and take the title. But Callum Bay is just a master of defense. You're seeing a man who could really counter punch. And he's keeping Sims from winning these rounds. And the fight is flying by. Callum Bay beginning to, to win every round. Callum Bay continues to have success with the, uh, the left jab. Appears to have some problems with the southpaw style in round one. But uh, not since then. One and two were Sims rounds. And remember, he had that big punch in the second round, which uh, won it for him. But from there on out, while he hasn't totally solved Sims style, certainly Callum Bay has had the best of it. Good stiff jab and a right uppercut by Sims. And again, it is Sims on the attack during the course of this seventh round. Just under one minute left in the seventh. You can't ask more from your fighter. Woody Petronelli in the corner cannot ask more from Robbie Sims. He's coming forth, he's punching as hard as he can, but just as you just saw, he just gets stopped in his tracks. Good short right hand, landed by Calibay. And another right hand, missed on the combination. Well, I don't know how many more of those 
those hard punches Robbie Sims can take. He was not noted for having a big jaw. And, it, and these bombs are just bouncing right off of him. He keeps coming back, but he's getting hit harder and harder as these rounds progress. And now Callum Bay scoring with the combination. As we come up to the end of round seven. On the Adriatic shore, Marv Albert, Ferdy Pacheco. And this is round eight. Sambu Kalambe defending his WBA middleweight crown against Robbie Sims. And the Fight Doctor scorecard looking very close. Yes, that, that last round was an example of uh, a very, very old, wonderful right hand by Kalambe. Lands right on the jaw. Sims comes ahead. That last round, I had to give to Sims because of this naked aggression. He just keeps coming, coming, and coming, and coming. He did get nailed several times, but he's still in there to punch three, four, five punches. So it's 67, 66 unofficially. And of course, if you weren't keeping score, you would have to say Callum Bay is winning this fight. Take it from him. You gotta take it from him. You gotta take it from him. And again, the words of advice from Sims brother Marvin Hagler. You gotta take it from him. Referee John Coyle has had a very on, easy evening. These two on. fighters have not clinched, have gone at, uh, at it without uh, resting and without any respite. Robbie Sims comes in at 29 4 and 2 21 by knockout. His four losses, all by decision to Bobby Chez, Clint Jackson, twice to Mike Tinley, while Callum Bay at 43-3, and three, one draw, 23 by knockout. And uh, Callum Bay, as we have been mentioning, has been on a string of victories coming off the win over Mike McCallum by a decision. Beat Iran Barkley to win the WBA title and also won by decision over Harold Graham of Great Britain and he did it in London. Callum Bay has found a hard stiff jab and he's been banging repeated jabs off the forehead of Sims who just keeps wading in. Ooh, uppercut from Callum Bay that got the attention of Sam. And that's a jaw snapper. That snapped his head right back. He's been throwing those arcing uppercuts for the last three rounds, but he's missed them. This one landed right where he wanted it, and Sims was still there. We have had no knockdowns to this point. Sims did land a right hand in the second round that rocked uh, Callum Bay, but it has been Callum Bay most of the way. Here is Callum Bay's uppercut. You won't see a better one all year long. Right on the button, and look at his head go up. It's amazing it's, that uh, Sims stood there and then came back on a, to mount an attack on his own. And we are underway in round nine. Bobby Sims in the white with the green stripe. Some move Callum Bay, the champion of the white, with the red stripe. It's been no shortage of offensive effort on the part of Robbie Sims, but it hasn't been enough against the defensive mastery of Callum Bay and the sharp counter punching. And that's been the story of this fight to this moment, with Callum Bay unofficially ahead 77 to 75. Sims showing signs of weariness for the first time. His face is puffing up more and more on those high cheekbones of his. And the discouraging thing for Sims must be to look across and see a guy that's just as fresh in the first round because Callum Bay looks like he's just getting warmed up and enjoying himself. Talking about a 32-year-old Sambu Callum Bay. Meanwhile, Marvin Hagler continues to uh, say, you got to take it from him, Robbie. Hagler is standing up yelling, and I don't see anybody behind him saying down in front. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, 
good combination by Calvin Bay. Calvin Bay now painting Sims. Most of the effective punches being landed by Calvin Bay. Well, come on. Again, another great uppercut. You got to take it Even from Sims him. has got a much better jaw him. than anybody giving credit him. for, or Callum Bay can't punch as much as people him. thought because these punches are just landing him. right where Callum Bay wants them. He ain't going to give it to you. He ain't going to give it to you. You got to take it. You got to take it. You get the come idea on, get that uh, Marvin Hagler now a bit come more on, on the in defensive in his instructions. Back in there. Back in there. Back in there. Back in there. Come on, back in there. Come on, back in there. Come on, Come on. Bobby, you got him. You got him, Bobby. On, Bobby. Yes, sir. there on, you go. Get you. And we're final seconds. Round nine. Another strong round for Sambu Callum Bay. And this is round 10. We are live on NBC Sports World in Ravenna, Italy. If you're coming by car, only an hour and a half drive from uh, Bologna. But if you're coming from Milan, <laughs> as we did, it's four nice hours. Sampo Kalanbe, the WBA middleweight champion, defending his crowd against Robbie Sims. And as this fight has progressed, Kalanbe has gotten stronger and stronger. And Sims proportionately weaker and weaker. His punches no longer have any zing to him. He's punching three, four, five punch combinations, but they don't carry much steam and very little damage on Callum Bay, who seems refreshed. Sambu Callum Bay, an adopted Italian, very popular in Italy, from Zaire, now living in Ancona, Italy, some two hours from Ravenna. He won the WBA middleweight title. That was vacated when Marvin Hagler signed to go up against Ray Leonard. Then Callum Bay beat Iran Barkley in a box off in October last year to win it. Barkley, of course, now the WBC champion after stopping Thomas Hearns last Monday in Las Vegas. And Frank Tate is the reigning IBF middleweight champ. He'll go up against Michael Munn next month. One wonders if um, Hagler, watching his brother take this drubbing, would not be tempted to step in and revenge his brother looking at a guy that uh, the old Hagler should well take apart. Well, following this fight, we will find out the future plans of Marvin Hagler. Trooper Ray Leonard has said that he will match up against uh, Hagler again if uh, Marvin wants it. They're talking about a November bout. But they didn't say which year, did they? That's true. <laughs> Ooh, nice shot. Callum Bay rocked Robbie Sims back on his heels with that hook. And Callum Bay continues to succeed with combinations, slashing combinations. The count is for Callum Bay. No shortage of uh, desire and heart on the part of Robbie Sins, but he is really getting powder Take on the way him, in. Bro. He ain't gonna give it to you. He ain't gonna give it to you. Hold him up, Daddy. Hold him up. He ain't gonna give it to you. He ain't gonna give it to you. He ain't gonna give it to you. And with Callum Bay dominating the action, we come to the end of the 10th round. different uh, point of view from the Petronelli's in the corner of uh, Robbie Sims. Uh, they're saying, hey, Sambu Calabay is going backwards. So there's no way that he can get to you in that manner. Well, he seems to have disproven uh, Petronelli unless he wasn't watching this fight for the last 10 rounds because Calabay has been good shot by Robbie Sims. Calabay has been going backwards. And indeed, Callum Bay has been able to punch going backwards. He stops and launches those rockets right at the head of uh, Sims. It just seems that Sims 
cannot solve the problem of the defensive style of Calabanis kind of punching ability. This is round 11, scheduled for 12. And for those people who thought that um, Sims would not be able to last to the late rounds while he's here, and he's carried most of the offense on his shoulders. So physically, Robbie Sims did not suffer from that 11-month layoff. He has gone this far only once before. What does the Fight Doctor uh, scorecard tell us? Callum Bay on a roll, 97-93 now. Uh, quite unofficially, but... Uh, combination by Callum Bay. Punishment is mounting on Robbie Sims. I don't know how much more of this he can take. Vicious left hand that got in, thrown by Callum Bay. And the short right hand score. These are hard shots being landed by Callum Bay. They can't be any harder and they can't be any more accurate. They're right on the button and still Robbie Sims comes off as the offensive fighter. Just under a minute left in the 11. We mentioned again and again the lack of balance on the part of Robbie Sims. Right now it's because he's getting powdered almost every round and his reflexes are certainly no longer sharp. And just got caught on the chin by Callum Bay. And again the combination. Another strong round for the champion, Sambu Kalanbe, as we go to a 12th and final round. And we'll stay right here. Okay, Rob. Let's start kidding over now. We need this round. Okay. Go, back. Go, go, go for a knockout. Go for a knockout, Rob. Yeah. All right? Okay. Go for a knockout. All right? Gonna yeah. Go for a knockout. It's bigger. This, this, this is the last round. Put it all okay. on this. Okay, Robbie. This guy's gigantic. Well, well good again. Pat That's Petrinelli right. telling Robbie right Sims, go for the knockout. Out. 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 So, in their minds, no question that it is Sambu Calambe. Well in front on the uh, scorecard as you look at some of those impressive combinations. It certainly is um, a masterful night for Sambu Kalambe, who has just about shown everything you want to see in a fighter that fights defensively. And this is the 12th and final round. Robbie Sims, the 28-year-old from Brockton, Massachusetts. And the 32-year-old WBA middleweight champion, Sambu Kalambe, who comes in at 43-3-1, and 23 by knockout. And Sims again lost his balance. Well, half of that was a punch thrown in the air that Kalambe um, very, very expertly ducked and dodged away from. You see Sims bouncing off all these ropes as he misses punches and loses his balance. Callum Bay looking very much like he did in the first round, just bouncing around. Up on his toes, and then with a beautiful spin move, able to connect. Callum Bay also wants to be careful. Sims needing the knockout. So Callum Bay moving in and out with that jab. Certainly an interesting prospect would be a fight with Frank Tate, who uh, is a masterful boxer, if he can get past none, which is not sure at all. That fight coming up should be a close one and a blazing good fight. Any possibilities out there in the middleweight ranks? Rematch possibility between Iran Barkley and Thomas Hearns. 
Well, you know, I think the middleweights, who have always been so uh, successful and exciting, just are thinned out by having three champions. If we only had one champion, these guys would all be contenders, and it would be a terrific uh, division when, as when Marvin Hagler held it for so long. All these people were in line waiting to fight Hagler. Now they're champions, and it's diminished the importance of the middleweights. Of course, if Hagler comes back, that would be an interesting uh, dilemma. And we're coming up on a minute remaining in the bout. Well, in summary, a valiant effort, gutty performance by an outclassed Robbie Sims, who tried as best he could to, to solve the uh, defensive mastery of Shambu Calumbay and has not been able to. Stay on him. Stay on And Sims' brother, Marvin Hagler, saying stay on him. But a knockout, the requirement now for Robbie Sims, making it back from the inactivity. Tied in with the alleged drug problem, several months of rehabilitation. While Sambu Kalambay, at the advanced boxing age of 32, has come on strong in his twilight years of his boxing career. Kalambay coming off the win over Mike McCallum, preceded by victories over Iran Barkley and Harold Graham, and appears to have successfully defended his WBA middleweight crown. That'll do it, and we'll be back with the decision in just a moment. And we are back in Ravenna, Italy, getting set for the decision, the scoring on the 10-point must system handled by three judges, Nicasio Drake of Panama, Ovi Overson of Denmark, and Medardo Villalobos of Panama. On the uh, Fight Doctor scorecard, Callum Bay of the winner, 117-111, but here now the official decision. No, per cortesia, scompriamo Non si può dare per cortesia. Non si schiaccia, ragazzi. Scompriamo lì, per cortesia. La prego, di fuori non fate le porte. And obviously a delay in uh, running down the decision. Sambu Calabay with a very effective counter-punching style. Robbie Sims did rock uh, Callum Bay in the second round, and uh, Sims fared well over the first two rounds and seemed to bother Callum Bay with a southpaw style right at the start. But then Callum Bay able to solve it and had his way the rest of the bout. And as is usually the case during the course of uh, European fights, there is confusion in the ring and a delay before we get uh, the official decision. Still no word. The indication is that Callum Bay has won the fight, but we have not gotten the official decision. You get the idea from the reaction from uh, Robbie Sims that he knows he did not come away with the victory. We're still awaiting the official word on the decision. Meanwhile, Marvin Hagler uh, being greeted by the uh, crowd and hearing the applause. And now the indication is being given to the announcer to uh, run down the, uh, the score. Right, here it is. Calambay, punti 118, Sims, punti 110. Il giudice Ovense. Right, one of the judges at 118-110. Calambay, punti 117, Sims, 113. Il giudice Villa Lobo. 117-113. Punti 119. 
And it will be a unanimous decision for Sambu Calafé. Campeone del mondo, Patricio Calafé. 117-113. And one judge had it 121-19 for Sims. So it is not a unanimous decision. A split decision victory for Sambu Kalanbe, and we're set uh, with the fight doctor in the ring. In this confusion, we've got Kalanbe and Sims together. They're shaking hands. One more time. Uh, did you find him this tough, Sims? Did you find, find him that tough? I would find him a whole lot different. All right. A troppo difficile. Troppo difficile. Non ho capito. Do, do, combate con Avec un, una vez más. Dopo, dopo. There's a difficulty in translation here as we're trying to get the translator. Sims is saying, can we have one more fight? And Calambe graciously said, anytime you want it, you got the rematch. Was this fight difficult for him? Che cosa hai trovato di difficile in questo combattimento? Well, cosa hai trovato di difficile? As you can see, the interpreter is having as much difficulty as we are keeping Calambe in range. He's being pulled away, and we go back to Marv Albert for a moment. All right, Ferdy. In the midst of the chaos in the ring, and now we have a correction on that uh, last judge's score. It was a unanimous decision. The scoring 118-110, 117-113, and 119-113. So a unanimous decision for Sambu Kalanbe. And now let's uh, try to get back to the fight doctor with Robbie Sims. All right, we heard you say one more time. Do you really mean it? I really mean it. I'm, I'll fight him a whole lot different. I'll be a whole lot meaner, and I'll prepare a whole lot better. How can you do much better than that? You fought your heart out. You were there every round. Obviously, it wasn't good enough, so I got to go back to school, and I got to do a little better. Well, you know, hey, I had to tune up. I came back. He's a good champion. I said that. But, hey, I'm a better champion. I know it, and I can beat this man. Very good. And now back to Marv Albert at ringside, who has marvelous Marvin Hagler beside him. And we'll be talking with uh, the marvelous one in just a moment. Welcome back to Ravenna, Italy. Marv Albert with the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. And the man to my left, of course, is marvelous Marvin Hagler. Back on April the 6th, 1987, the world stopped for Marvin Hagler. Uh, following the defeat at the hands of Sugar Ray Leonard, we've been mentioning all the speculation concerning what the future will be for Marvin Hagler. And, of course, there's been uh, speculation in two directions, that you will get back into the ring or we'll call it quits. What is the word? Well, the word is right now. My heart says yes. My brain says no. I think I've been very fortunate. <clears throat> Boxing has been very good to me. The only reason I would return, I think, if that Leonard had my belt. But since Leonard is playing games, which would take another year probably to consider whether or not to go back in there, I'd like to, first of all, thank God for giving me the craft and the skills. And also, I feel as though that I've been very fortunate to be able to get out of the ring with my faculties and my health. And I think that's more important than money and, and anything else. I want to also acknowledge that my mother has followed me and my wife has followed me through my whole career. And uh, I am going to say goodbye to boxing. So this indeed is the retirement yeah. speech. I am going to retire and uh, go into the movies. <laughs> if I don't get whacked. <laughs> you don't get hit often in the movies. Though. Well, uh, I feel very fortunate, like I said. but. Uh, to all my fans out there, I feel uh, very hurt to say this. In my heart, it takes a lot of energy to uh, say what I just said, that I will take a bite of boxing. I fought everyone that was out there, and uh, I gave them all a shot to dethrone me. Uh, I still felt in my heart that I still won my last fight, but I also want to give a lot of credit to all the people who followed me, and Patton Goody, who has been by my side for 17 years. Uh, I love them so much, and uh, and to all my fans who paid all the money and whatever and the travel expenses to come and see me throughout the world. When did you come to the decision? You seemed to be uh, indecisive even yesterday. Yes, I was. Uh, it was very hard. I talked to my wife and I talked to Pat and Goody and to my mother and uh, those are the ones that are very important to me and I have to think of, uh, of my health and, and my future. Does it still gnaw at you that you will not get it's, a final crack at Ray Leonard? <laughs> yes, it still bothers me a little, but I think Ray's going to play games, you know, he's a politician as he is, and it'll take another year for, for the fight to finally come off, so 
uh, I think I'm gonna put my interest into something else. Uh, and that's into the movie. I want to put the same devotion, sacrifice that I've done inside the boxing game into the movies. So there you have it, the retirement speech for now, because in boxing you never know. But marvelous Marvin Hagler has called it quits. And that will wrap it for us. Uh,